Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good afternoon. Welcome to Half Time Report. 12 noon, halfway through the trading session. A perfect time to take you through the top stories of the day. I'm Reema Tendulkar. With me is Nigel Souza. Well, it's a good start to the truncated week. Yeah. The benchmark indices have had a fairly steady and strong morning up until now. A gain of close, more than half a percent on the benchmark indices, outperforming the rest of the global markets, especially Asia. And despite uh, near Infosys taking away nearly 22 points on the Nifty, if we pull up the contribution plate, Infi has a weightage of close to about 6-odd percent, so this 3 percent knock is shaving off about 20, 22 points from the Nifty. Despite that, we are doing quite well, of course, courtesy L&D. That's right, Arima. You know, if you just uh, pull up the 11,500 put, that's the most uh, active in today's trading session. And in an uptrending market, you would like to see the nearest possible put, see a lot of open interest addition. And that's precisely what's happened today. So if you pull up the 11,500 put, you'll see the total open interest added is nearly around 13 lakh shares to our movers and shakers segment then. And let's start off with Anisha. She's here to tell us about the biggest gainer on the Nifty, l &T. Anisha, over to you. Well, yes, Nigel, it is the biggest gainer today, but if you look into year to date, it was the biggest underperformer when it comes to the large cap because it was pretty much flat year, on a year to date basis. Today, it is contributing around 22 points to the Nifty up move, pretty much negating what Infosys is pushing on the downside. But if you talk about l &T, yes, the board is going to mull the first ever buyback for the company on August 23rd. And if you look at the numbers, as of March 18th, they had a cash balance and a bank balance of a total of 8,000 crore rupees and an additional investment of around 9500 odd crores also if you look at the net worth of the company as of march 2018 it was close to around 61000 odd crores giving you an idea that the buyback can be close to the 6000 crore rupee mark if they do the 10 percent of the buyback via the board approval route uh, now mcquery also believes the same they say that the buyback size could can be around 0.7 to 1 billion dollars that works out around to 5000 to 7000 odd crore rupees and they say that the move is positive and that uh, should drive the price action in the near term that also boosts the confidence in the stock for the long term because remember their target price is close to around 1800 on the stock other than that they believe that this will help improve the roe of the business and uh, that should be taken positively by the street given the fact that the company is focusing a lot on improving its balance sheet and its returns as well so it was a positive move and the stock reaction will tell you that okay all right thanks so much uh, for that anisha well that's the biggest gainer on the nifty but what's dragging the nifty today is Infosys. So on the weekend, we had news of resignation. Rima, tell us, what does this mean? It's a near-term negative. The stock is down nearly 3%. Yes, yeah, so the MD, uh, sorry, the CFO, MD, MD Ranganath, Ranganath, has resigned. He will continue to hold on to the position till the 16th of November in order to make the transition, a smooth transition for the new CFO to take over. But he's been with the company for the last 18 years and his contribution has been invaluable, which is why his resignation has come as a setback for the company and the stock is down close to about 3% in trade. Now, Morgan Stanley has down graded the stock to an equal will, equal weight rating. They're saying that it's time to book profits and move on the sideline because the company lacks any triggers for a further rate, whether it's in terms of an earnings improvement, uh, but it just lacks uh, any kind of triggers. The company sees strong outperformance in 2018 so far. Uh, its valuation currently at 20 18 times forward multiple is in line with its historical averages. While this announcement may not have an impact on the company's finances, but uh, concerns around leadership stability that further top management exits will continue to remain an overhang on the stock. And even, um, you know, the possibility of, you know, the company's financials improving from here on, say, revenues and margins, all that is baked into the price. Um, so uh, that's the reason why they have downgraded the stock to an equal weight rating. JB Morgan says it appears that the company is struggling to keep the top management flock together. Uh, the CFO, MD Ranganath, has presided over two buybacks, a special dividend. Um, he's managed to uh, hold on to his costs very tightly, you know, hold on to their margins despite their revenues coming under pressure. So he's done a good job as a CFO. Uh, they say that TCS's valuation premium over Infosys may expand, and this development may also entail a longer and a tighter involvement by Nandan Nilekani, who made a comeback into the company a year ago. The CFO, generally speaking, is not the most critical officer in an IT services company, considering the kind of cash Indian IT companies generate. The stock has had a good run and therefore may pause. City says 
that going ahead as well, high attrition and senior level exits will create challenges in terms of execution. Their attrition in the prior quarter went up by 200 basis points year on year despite the steps taken by the company to curtail it. For instance, they had increased the compensation for 85% of their workforce from April. So they expect a negative reaction in the stock in the near term, but over the medium term, it will depend on the kind of growth Infosys clocks in. Okay, all right, Rima, thanks so much for that. Well, Apollo Hospitals has posted a largely inline set of earnings. Now, while the hospital a bit has improved and the pharmacy revenue has come in quite steady, we spoke uh, to Sunita Reddy, the MD of Apollo Hospitals, earlier today to ask about the outlook going ahead. Let's listen in to what she had to tell us. Look at the last one, you know, in, uh, in the sense of asset utilization and how we improve occupancy. Currently, across the board, we're at 65% occupancy. I think we have the potential to move to 75, especially in the new hospitals where the occupancy is at 62. We'll definitely see an improvement in margins. I think we've demonstrated that this quarter with 116 basis points improvement in margin. And going forward, I expect to sh we expect to show much better margin improvement. I think we are at the peak of our CapEx cycle. And by the end of this year, you will see interest costs drop. Okay, let's uh, now focus on Coal India. Uh, Nigel, it appears the street is divided, whether uh, the buyback will happen or not. Oh, well, uh, you know, it's about the OFS, actually. Okay. Rima, in early morning trading session, the stock was higher. But before we get to the news, let's just put out the disclaimer first. We are at CNBC and TV18 and have reached out to the management, but we haven't uh, independently verified any of these reports. Now, the news flow goes as like this. In the early morning trade, we did see the stock open up with a gain of around 25 to around 3% odd. That's because the, in the morning, the report reports indicated that, in fact, you know, the government has deferred the Coal India stake sale for the next couple of years. Remember, the report indicated that the government of India was looking to sell stake in Coal India from around 78% to bring it down to around 75% by August 21st, 2018. In the past, the deadline was 2017. That was pushed to around 2018. And now the report suggested that it's been pushed to 2020. So on the back of that, there was a relief rally that we saw in today's trading session. And that's why the stock had moved to around 280, uh, uh, 290 rupees odd. But from the top, it's seen some profit booking. Why is that? Because now reports just an hour or so ago indicated that the government of India is mulling a, a block deal in terms of coal India. They're saying they're looking to raise roughly around 10,000 crores to around 12,000 uh, crores odd. So basically, Rima, in the morning, the mo most investors, they thought that maybe in fact this overhang is out of the way coal india's dispatches as well were improving but now you know with these reports coming in just in the last 45 minutes odd that overhang is back on the table and that's where the stock has come off the high point of the day yes absolutely now just higher by close to about a half a percent let's move on to ongc that stock is doing quite uh, well in trade sapna das joins us for some information on ongc videsh sapna Absolutely. In fact, uh, this has been uh, widely discussed within the administrative ministry that finance. So basically what we are given to understand is that um, uh, at least the finance ministry is keen on the OVA listing. So uh, they have already reached out to petroleum ministry with a communication. Uh, there is no timeline as of now as to how and when the government plans to take it forward because it's going to be a completely consensus, uh, uh, you know, a, a decision taken on consensus with petroleum. But we are very clearly given to understand that an IP of OVL is what, uh, you know, at least the finance ministry would like. At this point in time, this is likely to unlock, unlock further value for ONGC. Uh, that's the kind of perspective uh, that the government has as of now. Uh, by SEBI regulations, uh, you know, your IPOs are generally at least 10%. Uh, given so, uh, but you're possibly looking at the size of the company, the parent as well as the subsidiary, uh, probably a higher percentage for an IPO may be planned. But as I've just also said, there is no timeline for this transaction as of now. It's at a discussion stage right now, so you have to see how it goes forward. But definitely an IPO proposal has been pushed forward by finance to petroleum industry. Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Sapna. Well, rain has finally subsided in Kerala after almost two weeks of incense and downpour and also resulting in a flood situation. We spoke to various companies on how the situation has affected their business. Here is what Federal Bank, Muthut Finance, as well as Titan had to say. To my mind, for sure, the comeback uh, in some of these areas would be very slow. I mean, when we were in the middle of it on Thursday, even I was worried whether we'd be able to get, get back to work. 
today we are all back in full flow and uh, people have to live right people have to win back their own uh, life so i am quite confident that uh, this we should not over trumpet the problem and create a situation uh, i think i think the maximum impact would be in certain pockets which has to be dealt with sensitively just like the way various other crises have been dealt with but you will see the comeback is quite significant and slow through slbc to iba and ourselves we are reaching out to rbi presenting the case uh, we may not get an uh, outcome in you know, a few days but i'm sure by end of the month there will be clarity on the regulatory forbearance if there is any that can be brought to customer because they surely need a uh, time to regroup our 590 branches in kerala around 75 80 branches is in the territory you mentioned right now kerala business is a large remittance business i see both rupee where it is and the need for money coming in remittance will increase at least 40% which will be a massive benefit rebuild will be a massive benefit demand consumption increase because of people having to get their lives back some challenges in geography that need infra improvement that's the commitment of the state i think that will happen and as resources is not going to be the issue is less than 5% or 4 to 5% of our business comes from kerala because kerala is generally seen by us as a resource mobilization state and not as a lending state but uh, as far as the impact of the branch uh, of the on the branches are concerned only three of our branches which were on the ground floor have been affected to due to this flood as far as the npas are concerned since we have the gold with us the npas is just a technical npa and we are fully secured with the gold always with us so i don't think there is an impact on that on the pnl generally softening of gold uh, prices is good for business um, having said that i think the industry is still uh, not um, uh, as buoyant as it used to be in the past we talked about that for the last 6 months or so um, so to that extent there is some softening of the demand uh, but hopefully the uh, softening of gold prices should help the southern states generally have been hit quite badly at least karnataka and, uh, and uh, kerala have been hit very badly uh due to the rains so uh, one is hoping that uh, things settle down there fast and uh, it picks up okay with that it's time for a quick recap of the top buzzing stocks in noon we've got lnt infosys federal bank mut buzzing stocks in noon we've got lnt infosys federal bank mutwood finance titan apollo hospitals ongc and coal india and some statements coming in from capital first to cnbc tv 18 that all the major approvals for the merger with idfc bank are in place and they will seek idfc bank shareholder approval in early september so capital first too has seen it pause of spike on the back of these statements let's uh, shift focus to sarda energy that's the next talk in focus remember the post a rather good set of numbers actually in the first quarter but what's the outlook post that uh, it seems the street is already excited the stock has already moved to the high point of the day but let's understand what's going on and what's the outlook from your on we have with us mr padam jain the director and cfo of the company hi mr jain thanks so much sir for uh, joining in well uh, sir we wanted to uh, ask you uh, Firstly, what is the current prices? If you could give us a sense of what are the pellet prices currently in comparison to quarter one. Similarly, with regard to sponge prices, what was it? What is it currently? And if you can compare it with quarter one average? Yeah, the currently prices of pellet and sponge have moved up substantially, mm. uh, as compared to the average relation of five thousand nine hundred in the first quarter. Mm. Our present uh, pellet price is hovering around seven thousand three hundred. Oh. and in case of sponge iron our average relation was 19000 now it is hovering around 23000 present price so there is a substantial increase in the prices as compared to the average relation of the first quarter okay uh mr jain uh, that's a big jump right in realizations is it sustainable uh, marginal there may be some marginal corrections presently there has been substantial export but yes definitely more or less prices will remain sustainable it appears Mm. there may be because there is a sharp increase there may be some correction from this level okay. marginal 
So what has caused this kind of a jump in prices, pellet prices at 7,300? Is there good demand coming in from China? Are you exporting or is it... Uh, yeah, you know, there are substantial exports from India. Okay. Uh, that has uh, created a demand for pellets. So you are exporting as well? Yeah, we are also exporting. So all this increase that you're talking about, it's all for exports or is, even in the domestic market we're seeing such robust pricing, particularly for pellets? Yeah, it is even in the domestic market because ultimately price parity will always be there. If someone is getting a price high price in export market, hmm. they'll always shift there to automatically demand supply in domestic market will change and the price of a domestic market will also come at par with the international market. Okay. So this uh, increase in prices is purely on account of demand, higher demand, and what are the kind of sales volumes you've seen in Q1? And if you could share some outlook for the full year, you know, your expectation of... Uh, sales um, uh, volume guidance? No, last year our average sales was 1 lakh uh, tons per quarter. Okay. And totally we had sold about 4 lakh tons. This year uh, we have already sold 1 lakh 50,000 tons in the first quarter. Mm. Okay. This year, so, so this you're referring quarter. to pellets, right? Yeah, pellets. We are talking about the pellets. Last okay. year our run rate was 1 lakh tons per quarter. Okay. And this one and a half la uh, lakh tons per quarter in terms of pellet sales, yeah. is this kind of a volume run rate sustainable for the full year? Can we hit six lakh tons? Yeah, we expect to maintain the volume. Okay, okay so six lakh tons is what you're looking at uh, for this year. All right, sir. So uh, if you could tell us also, sir, about your deleveraging plan. Uh, I remember the last time you joined us, you told us your total consolidated debt was around 1,050 crores, if I got yeah. that number right, correct? Yeah, right, right. Long term uh, debts. Okay, so do you plan on reducing your uh, debt from those uh, levels, if you could give us a sense? And also, what is your borrowing cost? You were telling us last time that you were looking at refinancing uh, your loans. Have you done that? No. So far as uh, this uh, leveraging is concerned, our total long-term loan remains more or less at the same level. At consolidated level, at standalone level, the debt is, uh, company is almost debt-free at the net level, net of the liquid investments. At standalone level, we are at uh, zero debt. No, sir, we are talking about consolidated uh, level. Consolidated, we, we are maintaining at the same level. What is happening? We are paying certain debts on the due dates, but at the same time, we are also uh, availing fresh loans for our ongoing projects, mm. particularly for our uh, hydropower project. So more, our long-term loan remains at the more or less at the same level of 1,050 crores. Okay. Um, Mr. Jain, you're talking about a sharp increase in your volumes. Your pellet volumes will go up from 4 lakh tons uh, on an annual basis to 6 lakh tons per, you know, on an annual basis. Uh, prices itself are on an upward trajectory, a sharp increase. Um, give us a sense of the kind of overall sales as well as margins you expect for the full year, F519. Yeah, as compared to last year, there should be minimum uh, 5 to 7 Basis points improvement in the margins. Five to seven basis points or five? Yeah, percentage, percentage points. EBITDA, EBITDA. No, uh, percentage points or basis percentage points? Point, percentage okay. points, so five percentage points. Percentage points. All right. All right. Uh, uh, you know, compared to the previous year. Okay. So if you are looking at a sales volume uh, number, what is the total sales you are expecting? And if you are saying five to seven percent, that means you are working with around a 23 percent margin for this year? Current year, no? Yeah, for the current yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, we expect to have margin around that. A margin level. around 23%. Yeah. Margins around 23% and top line should be what? In the first quarter itself, you have grown by more than 25%. So for the year, what kind of a sales... Uh, we have... Our revenue has increased by 17% Y O Y. Okay, so what kind of a number, uh, sir, are you looking at for the year? We can assume the similar increase in the... Annual basis. Also. So 2,500 crores is doable? Should be. Okay. Depends upon the pricing also. Volume is there. Definitely both way we will have the increase on account of the price as well as on account of the volume. Miss, Mr. Jain, you are sounding very confident. You know, and we have to tell you that uh, from the minute you appeared uh, on the channel and from the time you started giving us your commentary, your stock is up nearly around 5.5% approximately. Wanted to ask you this question, sir. Your stock price has fallen from around 600 rupees to sub 400 rupees. Yeah. Any possibility of the promoters coming and supporting the stock at these levels? I know you already have more than 72.5% in the company, but uh, will the promoter, you know, uh, look at increasing a stake, given that no. you're saying everything's so positive? 
No, promoters are already holding AG. You told me we are already holding yeah. 72.5% and yeah. at, at appropriate time. If In past also gradually we have increased, not in a okay. uh, big way. Gradually whenever required, whenever we found the opportunity, okay. uh, we have always invested. Okay, in let's, three, let, four quarters we have increased the... All right, you're keeping it open-ended, sir. So let's talk about your total coal requirement. What is your total coal requirement? How much of that are you getting via linkage? And are you receiving all the linkage? Because, uh, you know, a lot of customers tell us that only power plants are getting coal, uh, you know, and uh, some of you guys are not getting it. Give us some no, clarity. No, there is a delay in receipt of the quantity of the linkage. What happened, actually, whatever we were getting through rake movement, hmm. there was a problem. Because okay. racks were not available, All most of the racks were diverted to the independent Correct. power producer. So what is your total requirement in so a year? We have got convert our rake allotment converted into by road. Okay. So as to get the full quantity. Okay, so what is your requirement, sir? A total coal requirement in a year? Our requirement is somewhere about 9 lakh tons. 9 lakh per tons annum. per annum. How much of it are you getting and by linkage? Uh, about 70% plus we are getting through linkage, 70%. And now you're going to be uh, bringing this coal via road instead of via rail. So there'll Make be an additional part cost. Part of that we will be... Matlab, the ratio of the by road will increase, not okay. 100%. Part of that will still be coming through by rec, but okay. part of that we are bringing through by road also so as to increase the quantity, lifting quantity. Okay, oh. all right. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Jain, for joining in and giving us that positive commentary. The steel market, Rima, is looking very, very buoyant. It's a monsoon season, but for the first time in many years, I am seeing that prices in the monsoon quarter are higher than the first quarter. So, you know, the second quarter should look very, very good for a lot of these uh, companies. And as uh, Mr. Jain is telling us, the coal availability as well is a problem for some of these sponge iron producers. They require thermal coal, not the coking coal. So, you know, that's something else uh, that we should keep in mind. Stock moves to the high point of the day.